okay so <clears throat> we are going to start the learning outcome 3 of network design and uh, lawrence is available and we expect the abid as soon as he will uh, join and uh, he will be able to participate network design be able to build a network to meet a client brief so if we look at the indicative contents of the learning outcome 3 in the network design it says be able to build a network to meet a client brief it means for example if we assume that uh, we have been asked to build a network create a network for someone then obviously we need to look at the requirements as well as to find a solution so assessment criteria criteria wise you are looking for to build a network to meet a client brief network the test the network against requirements of the test of the client brief so obviously whatever the requirements you want to fulfill then you need to check whether they are whether uh, they are being fulfilled or not you need to test it as well you need to evaluate the performance of any of the issues for which you build the network against client brief and obviously you need to recommend the security requirements as well to keep the network safe and secure from unwanted cyber threats and attacks so what we will be discussing today will be the architecture of the network that you will be proposing to your clients you will be proposing the network testing and that would be including the objectives of network testing criteria for network testing testing results and then how you would be checking the performance let's say you need to select the performance criteria you need to measure the network performance and you need to look at the security of the uh, system of the network let's say which might include the network auditing dealing with the network threats security measures security policies so let us start with the slides network architecture that you will be proposing to your client and obviously you have a wide variety of the uh, network types like a lan wan wlan main sen can pen we have already discussed these type of the networks in previous uh, uh, slides and then depending on the requirement you can propose your clients for the use of particular type of the network and each network is obviously has certain advantages and disadvantages certain theoretical description is also given in the slides and uh, their uses and we can always uh, you know use them in more detail but we have since we have already discussed those over here we are only required to uh, propose a kind of network according to the uh, client need so obviously uh, the uh, type of the network would be would not be extended beyond the a kind of local area network possibly your net client may be looking for a network of networks like a wide area network their branches might be spread into uh, more than one building or may be out of the city may be worldwide so depending on the need you can propose them any kind of the network like you have a variety of the networks metropolitan area network storage network wan lan internet based so everything can be possible it is your responsibility to propose them a sustainable solution for their needs and obviously if it is a, a network and it needs to have a kind of topology the physical structure a network topology is the arrangement of uh, a network including its nodes and connecting lines 
So you need to look at the network topology as well that what would be the topology used for your solution. There are two ways of defining the network geometry. Obviously, we discussed earlier the physical topology or the logical topology. So it doesn't mean that whatever the physical look is given to you, obviously, the logical can be different. So you need to propose the network, type of the network, the topology as well. We discussed the different type of the topologies like a bus, token ring, mesh, star, and tree. And obviously, every topology has some advantages and disadvantages. So we have already discussed these topologies in previous lecture. We will go further on to the next slides. In the network design, you are going to propose the physical infrastructure to your client brief. In your proposed design, you are going to propose the physical infrastructure. The network infrastructure refers to the hardware and software resources. So, whatever you are going to offer a solution to your clients, you are proposing the use of hardware and software resources for of an entire network that enables the network connectivity, the communication, the operations and management of an enterprise network. So, in order to provide a solution, you are required to provide them the network type, you are required to propose them the uh, topology as well as you are required to pro uh, propose them the infrastructure as well and the infrastructure can be the hardware as well as the software. The network infra infrastructure provides the communication path and the services between users, processes, applications, services and external network are the internet. So, these are the main concerns that you are going to propose to your client according to their to their client brief. The infrastructure, network type, topology. Normally, the physical layer defines the electrical and the physical specifications of the devices. If you probably uh, look at the previous slides, then every network is represented uh, with is defined is described having certain uh, kind of logical or model, the OSI model we discussed earlier. So the physical infrastructure works at the physical spe specification of the layer. In particular, it defines the relationship between a device and a transmission medium. So the infrastructure in a whole will be the device that would be connected with the transmitting medium like a wires, cables, wireless, whatsoever uh, or the copper, copper cable or the optical cable. So, infrastructure is must, you need to be very much, uh, you know, uh, uh, knowledgeable about it that how and what kind of, you know, the hardware and software would be used in the proposed solution. This includes the layout of pins, voltage, GIS, cable specifications, hubs, repeaters, network adapters, host buses, adapters, and many more, whatever the networking equipment would be used. Its main task is the transmission of a stream of bits over a communication channel. So, for the proposition of a network solution, you should also have a good understanding and the knowledge of the equipment in the form of hardware as well as software available so that you as a network administrator or the solution provider should have a variety of uh, you know knowledge as well as you should be able to provide them a confident solution which should fulfill their requirements and obviously you uh, for your assignment brief you should be able to give a proposed solution by looking at the network types, topologies, physical, uh, you know, the devices uh, and the software we discussed earlier like uh, switch, hub, repeaters and these things. 
they really need to be explained uh, their uses and how you would be deploying those hardware and software now it is important we are going to discuss the network testing earlier we were talking about the network design the architecture that you would be uh, choosing for them now you are going to uh, test the network obviously you deployed your network you installed your network by choosing the hardware software and the network types now if it is in use then you are going to test it as well that whether it is performing well or not so network testing so let us see what is the network testing the network testing is an investigation conducted to provide stakeholders with information about the quality of a product or service under test so this is about a test then the network testing can also provide an objective independent view of the network to allow the business to appreciate and understand the risk of network implementation so whatever the network has been implemented you need to know that is there any risk in the network is there any need to test the objective of the network so the objectives of network testing is to develop the theoretical basis for network testing so network testing is being done based on the theoretical concept that that the way it would be tested and obviously to define a methodology and build tools that support cost effective effective testing so the testing of the network would be done by a methodology and by using the certain tools to get the effective testing of the network the task of network testing addresses the problem of verifying that a network built from components was correctly in concert to provide required services so what is the object of network testing it addresses and verifies that the network whatever you have built was correctly against the required services in connection with the required services whatever the services you are expecting and the network is working according to your needs so in this way you need to know the objective of the network testing and you need to get it tested and then you will be uh, you know evaluating your network that how well it is performing so the testing itself a uh, testing of the network would be based on certain criteria if you have a kind of a uh, criteria then you can test the network and get the results so effecting testing of a network has a number of prerequisites for example the testers must know what the network is required to do and you can not test the network that against uh, i mean without the requirement you cannot test it if you uh, don't know that what is the what is required to run on the network then you won't be able to test it that whether it can uh, run on the network it, it can be uh, it can be adjusted into the network or not otherwise for example if the network has a capacity of let's say 10 gigabytes per second and you don't know that what network is required to do against your requirements then you cannot test it so being a tester you need to know what is required to do on the network then you really evaluate it that whether the required functionality is achieved on the network or not so that's about the uh, the first point and then 
the testers must develop a plan for determining whether the network does what it is required to do so the plan itself is most important it cannot be the case that uh, if you are not using the network and you are going to test the network but however you should be very much clear that probably the testing of the network means the usage of the network at the time of uh, its peak usage and its normal usage its minimal usage whatever the usage percentage is you should have a plan to test it probably you can say that with the minimum data it has to get some uh, kind of values let's say uh, let's say a minimum values then certain testing results at the um, average uh, usage and then certain uh, test may be taken at the uh, most uh, usage of the network so whatever needs to be done that needs to be done under a plan that at what time you will be doing a particular test otherwise you won't be able to test the system right and uh, next is testers must be able to mimic end user activities and sometimes must be able to mimic some of the network elements if they are not available during the test so it's not the case that you are you will you would be able to test the network as a whole uh, as a tester but no it cannot be the uh, the case that the usage of the network the capacity of the network could be tested by certain simulation tools or anything else but if you really want the network to be tested then you will have to mimic the end user you will have to create a dummy user of yourself then by using the mimic user a dummy user you are becoming a user of the network and being a user of the network you would be assessing the network you would be assessing the network and the assessment of the network will give you the results that you expect you are with you are uh, real users whatever the results of your real users will get in the same way uh, for being a tester you mimic to be a user and then you can realize that how the network is performing well so it's about a kind of guidance uh, that you need to be a good tester then testers must be able to determine what the system has done in response to their activities so obviously the aim of the testing is to know that what the system is doing against the activities whatever the activity is supposed to be done then you expect the uh, kind of response on the network probably you do not get the expected response but if you get the expected response then it is against the particular activity so this is kind of the uh hint to the tester then testers must must be able to measure the effectiveness of testing done so far so the criteria of the testing should be very much clear to you otherwise you won't be able to know that what really you want to uh achieve for example if you know that if you want to know that uh, you need a performance above 80% okay if it is above 80% then probably you need to measure and you need to calculate the effectiveness of your own desire for example if you think that if the network performance is above 80 then you would say that network is effective your test done is effective the measure would be satisfied and if you think 
that the you are not getting the particular threshold of the testing results then your test is something else and you you do not uh, you know qualify uh, or your network doesn't qualify for the particular performance so it's this is about the general things about the testing criteria and their testing results your network testing would be dependent on uh, the your requirements and the expected results over the network so it's about the testing criteria and the testing results you propose your solution to the net, to the client brief and then you test it the network uh, after analyzing the requirements and you created a criteria and after creating a criteria you did some test and then you when you compare the expected results and the given results and then you seen the difference and you seen the effectiveness of the uh, network and then you concluded that what performance of the network you are achieving now furthermore the testing of the network is and its performance criteria and measures are based on certain constants let's say if you want to know the performance of network then following measures are often considered important let's say bandwidth throughput latency jitter error rate and these are the measures so bandwidth is now normally commonly measured in bits per second is the maximum rate that the information can be transferred so if you remember that last in the last slides we discussed about the bandwidth in detail that the, how much the data can be carried out uh, through a medium per second so probably it could be the uh, digital into the bits and uh, if it was a bandwidth used in the signals then it was measured into the hertz cycles per second the frequency wise and the throughput is it is the actual rate that information is transferred so in the bandwidth the how much information is measured is transferred and the throughput is the actual rate the information is transferred the latency is the another measure for the network performance the latency is the delay between the sender and the receiver decoding it this is mainly a function of the signal travel time and processing time at any nodes the information traverses so latency is the delay how much delay is in in the network transmission probably you must have seen this latency word into networking when you are trying to access any kind of server or if you are doing any speed test then you really see this term that how much delay is between the you and the other device jitter is the variation in the packet delay at the receiver of the information so probably whenever you send some information then if there is any kind of delay at the receiver side then there is a jitter if the device is not ready and there is a delay for the receiver then it is called jitter the error rate the number of corrupted bits expressed expressed as a percentage or fraction of the total sent so it's not the case that every time you send any message or data in the form of packet then it arrives without being lost no every time you send some data in the form of packets then you expect some kind of data packets packets to be lost so really depends that how much error rate it is then probably the as much as the medium is strong you get the more uh, you know like a less number of errors for example if you are using the ethernet cable for the network then you get 
you get a kind of loss into the data or the frequency and if you are using the fiber optic cable then you have a less number of uh, you know the uh, decay or reduction or the loss of the data that's why the for example the high speed networks you are always recommended the fiber optic cable so fiber optic cable allows you to transfer the as much as data as well as it has less number of losing the packets however the conventional copper wires like in the ethernet they have more let's say let's say the loss of data uh, while transmission some more explanation about the bandwidth we discussed earlier throughput was the concept of the actual day rate the information is being transferred and then the jitter and the error rate they are uh, explained in these slides a little bit more so you can always go through these slides we let us we try to uh, move further to some other slides and as the name with these are a simple explanatory uh, the definitions let's say the avail the available channel bandwidth and the achievable achievable signal to noise ratio to determine the maximum possible throughput throughput is throughput is the number of messages successfully delivered per unit time so as these are the little definitions about uh short definitions about these terms and these are the bit more detailed definitions so we move further on the next slide and you can always repeat these definitions into more in uh, more detail now now we talk about the network security so far we were testing we were talking about the network testing and the first the topic we discussed was the network design so now we are uh, we are on the third topic of today's lecture is the network security so we started with the network ar architecture then we discussed the design then we discussed the testing and the fourth one is the network security that how you would be providing the security to your proposed network solution yeah so started with proposition of the architecture you gave the architecture then you gave the design and then you tested the solution then you tested the proposed network architecture and then obviously in order to make the network secure even if it is performing well and if it is not secure then obviously your network is at risk and you are you haven't done very well with your networking so the topic in the network security is the network auditing the <coughs> network auditing is a process in which your network is mapped both in terms of software and hardware you are trying to see that how the network is doing well using software and hardware the process can be daunting scary if done manually but luckily some tools can help automate a large part of the processes the administrator needs to know what machines and devices are connected to the network you want to audit the network that how is everything going well or not what happens if the network is not secure then according to the audit of the network the things won't be doing very well <coughs> and you get the unexpected results or you get the modified results or you get the malfunctioning results over the network so it is the Uh, the responsibility of the network auditing to do and to see the how the process is going through using the software and hardware and obviously it is very difficult it is very daunting 
scary, impossible to test the network that what's going on manually, you cannot do it, but obviously certain tools have been designed for the network monitoring that make the life easy. So administrators need to know what are the machines and devices connected to the network and how they are working possibly the simulation devices network monitoring devices can be can also be connected to the network in order to audit the network so let us see that how your network is open to threats and what kind of threats can happen to your network. Potential attacks, software and platform vulnerabilities, malware and misconfiguration issues can pose serious threats to organizations seeking to protect private, confidential and proprietary data. So, any attack on software platform vulnerability happens any malware or any misconfiguration issue, if it happens, then it is a threat to the organization which where someone is trying to get the protective private and confidential data. So fortunately, various technologies collectively known as Unified Threat Management, also called as UTM, make it easy to use appliance-based tools to provide through and comprehensive security coverage. So, like they, have, they are working together, UTM, they are providing a kind of appliance-based, a kind of integrated solutions, kind of integrated comprehensive coverage to the network threats. So, typically, UTM solutions bundles a great many functions that includes for example, proxy services. What does the proxy services do to block revealing details of internal IP addressing on networks and to determine and or examine communication and data transfers at the application level? What happens in the proxy servers if you are using the proxy server then you will be your most of the details will be hidden from the uh, within the network while they are traveling for example if there is no any proxy and you are communicating from your home uh, to another uh, network maybe in another city then through the network someone can easily know the detailed ad IP addressing of your network, your communication, that from where you are communicating, what is your IP address and how you are communicating, how often you are communicating, which uh, ports you are using. But if you are going through the proxy service, then probably that service will hide all the details of the IP, IP addresses and the locations that who you are and from where you are using or accessing or participating into the network. Then another inspection that's called the stateful packet inspection to distinguish the legitimate network communication from suspect or known malicious forms of communication. So Stateful packet, inspe ins uh, uh, packet inspection is a kind of <coughs> diagnosing the legitimate network communication. For example, the way you should receive the packets of your message. Normally what happens, the data when you are sending from one place to another place, it travels into the form of packets packets like a kind of in the form of bits of the and the group of bits they cannot let's say if you say that uh, 
you are sending a one in the uh, file to someone then you cannot let's say that pass it as a one mb over the network but every time it will be splitted into the data packets really depending on the size of the network and the application it divided into the packets the arrangement of the packets possibly could be compromised like the state of the packet that it would explain that how the packet is coming and if there is any distinguishness if there is any something different way of receiving the packets then you suspect kind of malicious work so how you check you check the statefulness packet uh, packet by the inspection then there is the deep packet inspection to enable the data portion or payload of the network packets to be checked the facility not only enables protection against malware but also permits data checks to block leakage of classified proprietary or private confidential data across the network so it's not only the case that uh, the packets are received delay but you can also check that whether the packets have been open the any is there any data leakage into the packet somebody try to read it that kind of the inspections basically really give you an idea that whether your network is secure or not if your network is not secure it doesn't mean that you definitely need the security but if you think your application is secure, is confidential like you are an enterprise then at any point at least some of your enemy would try to deceive you deceive your network and try to harm your network otherwise for example if there are there are no chances of the any harm threat uh, from the any user then probably you could safely uh, communicate Uh, over the network without providing the security but unfortunately behind any of the usage of the network somebody is to be considered some harmful that's why you provide them a kind of secure network by providing certain criteria like a proxy service stateful packet inspection deep packet inspections and these kind of tricks that you do obviously this is kind of uh, a very technical uh, you know work but how it is done what it is called they that these are the terminologies then the real time packet de- decryption then obviously the decryption is a kind of encrypted message is to be de encrypted how the decryption exploit special hardware which essentially reproduces software programs in the form of high speed circuitry to perform complex data analysis to permit deep inspection to occur at a real network wire speeds so it's not only the case that you are using only the software to test the network but real time packet uh, packet de- decryption by using some special hardware it gives you a very faster and effective way of identifying the problems that can occur into the transfer of the uh, data at high speed circuitry email handling which includes the uh, included malware detection and removal as well as spam filtering and content check your checks for phishing malicious websites and blacklisted ip addresses and urls probably you must have noticed that nowadays not only nowadays but since long time there has been kind of uh, viruses being sent into the emails and uh, in, in initial times the 
email providers like hotmail gmail yahoo they were not uh, efficient enough to identify any viruses into the email but nowadays you must have seen that every email you receive then you get also a notification that the attachments have been uh, sent to you or the attachments that you have received have been scanned first and then being given to you so that particular email handling not only checks for the antiviruses but it checks for any of the possibilities of the phishing malicious websites or many more kind of like a email threats you can be faced includes the email handling intrusion detection and blockage intrusion is basically sometimes the data is intruded you are receiving the message but somebody is adding their own data into the message so it's kind of the intrusion detection you are going to detect the intrusion has somebody else the modified the uh, kind of data then application control or filtering which observes the applications in use so not only the kind of communication but the applications itself are being observed especially the web based applications and services and apply security policies to block or stop unwanted or unauthorized applications from consuming network resources or accomplishing unauthorized accesses to the or transfer of the data so it's not only the communication is to be secured but the devices or the applications also needs to be secured so that they cannot be used or malfunction or misused for any of the purpose virtual private network or remote access devices enable remote users to establish secure private connections over public network links including the internet most organizations use such technologies to protect network traffic from snooping while it's en route from sender to receiver so for example you you think that uh, for example the banks are connected if one transaction is being done from one branch to another branch then you don't expect that they would be talking or the communication they are sending to the normal internet but no they have a vpn virtual private network nobody else can enter that particular vpn into the part of the vpn even to listen to the secured information for example you send a transaction uh, to someone you wanted to send money to someone then how much money you are sending obviously the information will be encrypted with some techniques if it is being done into the vpn the virtual private network then the intruders the hackers even won't be able to see the encrypted transactions as well while if it is going through the normal internet and the communication is secure and encrypted then possibly the hackers could access that particular encrypted packets and probably they might take the years and years to decrypt it however using the vpn virtual private networks you your transmission is going through and pass through a very private network where nobody can enter the network or even read or listen to the even encrypted data so that's about the vpn and other security measures you can use like introduce the firewalls antivirus systems intrusion detection system patching and updating general network tools port scanners network sniffers will will vulnerability scanners and these things you know you need to have a security policy a network policy is a generic document that outlines rules for computer network access it reminds how policies are 
for enforced and lays out some of the basic uh, architecture of the company security network environment. So, if your network is secure, you have some security measures, then they need to be applied according to the security. The document itself is usually several pages long and written by community. Security policy goes far behind the simple idea of keeping keep the bad guys out, but the very complex document means means to govern data access, web browsing habits, use of passwords and encryptions, email attachments. It specifies these rules for individuals or groups of individuals throughout the company. So it's not only uh, the way that your network is secure, but the policy. For example, <coughs> if you think that some of your employees can reveal the uh, privacy, they can uh, expose the privacy, they can expose or provide the username and passwords to anyone else, then obviously you cannot stop them, uh, but you can have some policy that every time your usernames and passwords should be changed. For example, the every day the employee of the bank is getting a new password and after 5 p.m. Once they are leaving the branch, then the password would be automatically be changed. So it really depends on the policy. What policy allows you to be more protective for the measures of your network? Yeah, so that's about the so. How is the uh, Lawrence? Do you have yeah. any questions? How would you? Sorry, I can hear you. Still what? Okay, so I stop the recording now, and then we can discuss more about these slides. Yeah. Okay.